Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and module number six, Acid and Base Reactions. This is video number 18 and it's the start of our final section in Acid and Base Reactions where we look specifically at uh, volumetric analysis. So what is volumetric analysis? Well, volumetric analysis, I guess, is easiest to contrast with gravimetric analysis, which is another method that we've used in order to determine the composition or the nature of particular types of mixtures in particular. The technique of volumetric analysis is what we apply to the um, solutions of different acids, bases or salts in order to determine um, something about their uh, constituency. So in simple terms, what we use volumetric analysis for is to determine the concentration of an unknown solution. So that's pretty much what we're trying to do with uh, pretty much the rest of this uh, section of the acid and base reaction topic. So in order to do that, the first thing we need is a standard. And we talked about standards um, in the year 11 course. Uh, a standard is a solution which has a known concentration. And there are two ways to know a concentration. You can either use what we call a primary standard. And a primary standard is a substance that has certain characteristics, such as a large molar mass, uh, it's stable, it doesn't absorb moisture from the uh, atmosphere, and it remains uh, consistent and pure um, over time. So its concentration is not going to be constantly changing. One substance that's used very commonly in um, acid-base titrations is sodium hydroxide. Now sodium hydroxide does come in pellet form, but its molar mass is just 40 and it's very very unstable the pellets themselves will absorb moisture from the atmosphere and this will change the concentration of the solution um, and continue to do so even after you've made the solution so this is not a primary standard but it could be standardized that is it could be a secondary standard and in fact often we will um, use a primary standard often an organic acid such as tartaric uh, potassium hydrogen phthalate or um, oxalic acid, something like that, in order to standardize um, a solution of sodium hydroxide. And then, of course, if we then use that solution to titrate against an unknown acid solution, uh, we will know the concentration of the sodium hydroxide, and therefore we can calculate the concentration of the unknown. This is what volumetric analysis is all about. And of course, the most important thing about it is it's a precision technique, and so therefore it, will, it requires practice. It's a precision technique. And so when any, whenever we're talking about precision techniques, we need to look at accuracy. We need to look at reliability. Are we getting consistent results in multiple repetitions? Um, and also validity. We need to make sure that what we're using is actually giving us the correct results. And validity often relates to a very important um, component of a volumetric analysis, which is the selection of an indicator. Now, it's not a simple matter of just picking any old indicator and that will tell you um, what you need to know about your solutions. Uh, different indicators can be used for different types of combinations of acids and bases, and we'll explore that uh, as we go further into this section of the module. The, the, the technique of titration is the most common one, and it's the one that we will be using in order to um, carry out volumetric analyses. It's uh, a technique that's used to determine what we call the equivalence point. And this is the point where the reaction has occurred as we um, write it. So, for example, if we were to titrate sodium hydroxide against um, hydrochloric acid, then we would know that if we write the equation, we would get a water molecule and sodium chloride as salt, which would remain aqueous. And the mole ratio here would be one to one to one to one. So it's this one here that is the key. What we want in our titration is to find the point where we have exactly one mole of sodium hydroxide with one mole of hydrochloric acid. So we have reached neutralization. 
As I mentioned earlier, in order to determine exactly where that equivalence point is, we need to select a correct indicator. Some of these will have their equivalence point at a pH around 7. In fact, this one will, uh, because it's an example of what we call a strong acid plus a strong base. And we'll look at some more examples of these a little bit later on. So therefore, it's going to have a pH of 7. Uh, but not all acid-base reactions will come will, will have an equivalence point at 7. There are some different uh, examples of those, and we're going to have to look at how that might affect our decision on which indicator we use. Because the reality is, most of the time, we cannot find the equivalence point. It shoots through that point so fast that we actually are looking for an end point, a point to stop our titration, which is as close as practical to the equivalence point. And again, we'll have a look at some of those examples in the next of these videos. The other thing that's very important is that this technique involves some specialized glassware that we haven't used before. Of most uh, relevance is the burette, which is a graduated um, piece of glassware uh, with a very specific set of scales that allows us to be very accurate in our measurements of volume. We will also use conical flasks as our reaction vessels. We use uh, graduated pipettes um, uh, as well as devices to uh, draw liquid into and out of those pipettes, bulbs uh, for example. But these are all pieces of equipment that you will use when you actually go through this technique yourself in class. Practice as I mentioned on the previous slide, is the key to this. So it's really important that you get some time to work through the technique of titration, understand what you're doing and where those endpoints are. Good luck and thanks for watching.